Okay, I was thinking about uh, the quest for the eternal uh, digital scholarly edition, but uh, that seemed a bit too much. Uh, as you know, we have a problem with uh, longevity for uh, digital editions. Why? Because uh, starting with uh, the very first one uh, uh, that were produced in, uh, during the first generation of uh, digital scholarly edition, we had problems, especially with software, um, going down, uh, not being compatible with uh, um, the new versions of, of operating systems, uh, mainly because uh, many of these projects were distributed on uh, optical supports, such as CDs and DVDs. This means that uh, the software becomes uh, unmodifiable and uh, that uh, implies that uh, after a few years uh, you have something which is not going to work uh, anymore, basically. So we have the paradox that uh, we plan to save cultural heritage items uh, using digital means only to see these digital means going uh, offline while the uh, said uh, cultural uh, heritage items are going to last. Uh, they have lasted for centuries, uh, perhaps millennia. They are going to last some more. Uh, case in point, uh, the Electronic Exeter book. Uh, this is an excellent uh, uh, edition published by Bernard Moore, uh, uh, an excellent scholar. And uh, uh, it was published in 2006. Uh, in 2016, there was uh, a panel at the Kalamazoo uh, Medieval Congress um, titled The uh, Digital Decade of the Electronic Exeter Book because uh, the software was geared towards a specific version of a specific browser on a specific operating system which meant uh, basically that uh, after um, Windows 95 and uh, Internet Explorer 5.5 were not used anymore, this uh, DVD became uh, useless uh, to browse uh, the edition. Uh, you can see here, sorry about that, you can see here that there is a way to go back and browse the edition as it was intended, and that is uh, by recurring to emulation software. Of course, this is not so easy. This is not something that I would suggest everybody do. Okay, then we have a real sea change when, for the second generation of the digital edition, um, editors migrate them to the web. This sort of solves many problems and we might think that if something is browsable today, is going to be available uh, tomorrow. Uh, that, it, that unfortunately it is not always the case, uh, so we really have to see uh, and understand which are the main factors uh, uh, limiting lo longevity and accessibility of digital editions. There are many, I will focus uh, on the um, uh, more technical ones, uh, for instance, uh, in digital uh, technologies for the web uh, are constantly evolving. We have again another paradox because uh, development uh, of the HTML standard is very slow. It is a really stable standard, but uh, all the uh, ecosystem of technologies uh, around this standard are evolving really, really fast. And also you have uh, um, growing complexity in uh, uh, digital scholarly editions because there are many, many more features which uh, are going to be added. In particular, I find very interesting the development in the direction of the semantic edition using ontologies to create uh, a real knowledge base which can be interrogated. This is another uh, problem which is uh, tangential to uh, the main one, the fact that some of these uh, uh, editions uh, are created as uh, haute couture items, uh, using uh, the uh, terminology introduced by Elena Pierazzo, meaning that a specific, very sophisticated, sometimes, software is developed uh, for them. And possibly it is not shared, possibly it is uh, only based uh, on specific features of the uh, texts uh, and other uh, components of the editions. Uh, these are possibly the most vulnerable uh, um, tools uh, that we can see on the web uh, today. 
So this is a comment by Martin Holmes, even a relatively simple WordPress site requires a backend database, MySQL or whatever, a web server that supports PHP, whose versions age out and become unsupported at a steady rate, just like the database server, various plugins, because site designers who give little thought to long-term maintenance will inevitably pick up and install lots of useful third-party plugins which are typically unvetted, badly supported, and potentially dangerous, and lots of other JavaScript and PHP libraries and tools. Your site will have a different constellation of these dependencies and vulnerabilities than the next one. Each project will require continual hands-on expert maintenance, with that burden growing rather than diminishing over time, until at some point it will be impractical to keep it going at all. Okay, so if you find uh, this scary, I did uh, as well, uh, so you're not alone in that. And I think it is intentional because Matty Holmes uh, has been working on the Endings project. But this is just to give you an idea of the fact uh, that uh, the uh, full stack, when you build your front end on top of a back end which is based on a database, a search engine, possibly a front-end for your website, such as WordPress, PHP, and so on, this means that you're mixing many technologies together. These technologies will require maintenance. Also, you will have uh, something that works at the moment you put it together. You will have uh, a balanced mix at the point. What, does it ha what could happen if some part uh, of your stack uh, is going to be outdated, uh, is going to present uh, security flaws? This uh, has happened to me. I worked uh, on a project uh, which was uh, hacked uh, and uh, uh, the uh, whole website was used uh, to mine uh, bitcoins, uh, so not really <laughs> something uh, nice. And, uh, and so this means uh, that uh, you also have to take uh, uh, security problems into consideration and do maintenance with uh, an eye for that uh, specific aspect uh, of your edition. So, solution. What can we do uh, to uh, mitigate uh, this kind uh, of problem? Well, uh, first of all, uh, um, the 100 year edition, this is just uh, an idea. Uh, what I really mean is that we should be able to see, to look beyond uh, the current state of uh, the uh, web uh, infrastructure as it is today and say, okay, you're going to build something which is going to last uh, even if uh, these technologies are going to change. Um, I think that we also need to look very closely into data and presentation separation we already do that if, uh, for instance, we're using TI, so we are forced to keep uh, the semantic aspect uh, separated from the presentation aspect. Uh, but uh, um, this is important because if our tool is going to fall into obsolescence, at least we can pick the data up and recreate the edition using some other tool. Uh, this is also fine if uh, our editions continue to work well. Well, I think we should uh, uh, share our data in any case uh, using uh, the fair principles so that uh, other people can uh, take advantage of them. Also something which uh, has not been really considered is long-term preservation of the data. Uh, I've been reading many projects lately and when they do uh, care about uh, long-term preservation of the software, the edition on the web, there is a sort of standard about 10 years. Now, is 10 years enough? Are we going to be satisfied with an edition being online for 10 years? Well, perhaps uh, this is what uh, um, current funding and technical uh, capabilities allow us uh, to do, but uh, I think that this is too short a term. So for long-term preservation of the data, for instance, we can uh, use uh, uh, repositories such as Zenodo and perhaps GitHub, 
uh, an idea that we had some time uh, ago was to uh, zip GitHub repositories and uh, push them on the node for long term preservation. <coughs> so we also need haute couture <coughs> sorry, projects, of course, because they push the boundaries of research, but we should be careful in dealing with them. The most interesting answer to uh, the longevity problem is that coming from the minimal computing approach. <coughs> this has been introduced by ASIG of the uh, ADHO, this is available on the web as you can see, and this is, uh, has been applied by the Endings Project, which is a project uh, led by Martin Holmes and Joe Takeda, uh, which uh, um, aims at creating static sites which allow you to preserve uh, your edition on the web indefinitely, at least in theory. You will find all about that here. So the only problem is that uh, we um, have different trends in uh, uh, the evolution of the digital scholarly edition. As I hinted, we have, uh, for instance, uh, the um, uh, development of uh, knowledge-based editions, semantic editions based uh, on ontologies. Also, uh, we are another tendency which is called uh, uh, assertive edition or computational edition where you have uh, more processing, processing power needed to process the data of uh, your edition. And finally, even any kind of edition could benefit from such feeders as a, a collaborative space which implies recourse to the server to allow for login and access by many users. I've been experimenting with these concepts in the development of this tool, which is a, an edition browser. This is based on the principle of client only which means that it doesn't need server-side software, which means that it doesn't need long-term maintenance, because it is all based on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We have several versions of EBT. The first one is a sort of anticipation of the endings project, because it was based on um, a series of XSLT transformations uh, which uh, ended up uh, in creating a static site. So you could say that, uh, for instance, this edition is uh, uh, applied minimal computing uh, uh, and uh, um, I think that this could last uh, for the uh, next uh, hundred years with no problems. Uh, the second version and the third one in development are based on a different principle. Uh, which uh, allows for greater fle flexibility, but uh, it is also more complicated because uh, we uh, put the complexity into the software, uh, which means that development can become uh, quite uh, difficult. But the main problem here is that uh, the client-only uh, approach is, of course, limited. First of all, uh, if, if you base uh, uh, your browsing software on this approach, everything happens uh, on the user's computer. So it very much depends uh, on the, um, not only on the speed of the internet connection, but also on the amount uh, of uh, memory processing power on the user's computer. Um, also, no server-side support means that some features are limited. For instance, uh, there is no, um, no way we can equal the power of uh, um, dedicated search engine which is uh, featured in many other editions because we have to recur to very simple ones. So we have basic text search but it is uh, somehow limited. Also, in no way we could think about uh, having uh, multi-user access. For instance, we are developing a feature to annotate the edition so the, the final user can uh, take notes and save them. Uh, unfortunately, there is no way to share them with other people, which could be interesting, 
because they're saved on their computer. Okay. And as I hinted, uh, the, uh, there are problems in the fact that uh, the uh, development framework uh, Angular is uh, very powerful, it is uh, uh, developed by Google, so it is uh, a web standard in a way, but uh, it is also complex, it has a high uh, learning curve, so it, it is difficult to coordinate uh, development using this framework. So, how to deal uh, with uh, this problem? <laughs> Yes, that, that, that's related to the last uh, point, because uh, we devised uh, some uh, strategies, for instance, uh, uh, using uh, separate modules within the software, so they can be maintained uh, more easily by new developers. We are distributing some functionality over uh, JavaScript libraries, which are separate parts uh, of, the, of the software, and they are very fast to access when needed. Also, this idea of uh, a client-server version of DVT has been uh, floating for some time, but of course I'm very hesitating uh, about this, uh, not only because of the uh, complexity of uh, the, tax, uh, the task, but also because <coughs> it goes against uh, what uh, I always thought uh, of this little piece of software. Today, to install your edition on the web, you just have to copy a folder, basically. Uh, if uh, we did uh, the client-server approach, uh, we would have to install other software before that. Perhaps we could use containerization, use a Docker-style approach. That is a way to explore, of course. But uh, in any case, uh, uh, installation and user would become much more complicated for the user. Uh, that said, we are developing new features which are not taxing uh, the software too much in performance. For instance, uh, this is um, a notorial philology genetic criticism uh, view, which uh, are now uh, finalizing, and about uh, the assertive edition, the computational edition, we are no now working on a way to best uh, um, take advantage of the richness of TI data. For instance, we have in EVT3, this, uh, this is a cross search <coughs> between the uh, person list in TI and the in event list to establish uh, relations between people, event, between person and person within the list so that the user can do their own research. A basic uh, um, slide with information about EBT, and uh, I think I'm done. Okay.